I was gonna play this game called Chris Tales. It's like an indie game. It's got kind of a time travel mechanic. Um, but I played the demo. I just wasn't very impressed with like the overall construction of the game. Like, it just has like a flash game kind of quality aspect to it. It's got some real basic like polish errors, like um, text that doesn't like quite fit in the boxes, especially in the battle menus, stuff like that. And uh, they have this little quick time mechanic. A lot of time turn-based RPGs have like a little quick time mechanic. Uh, but this is like the Mario RPG, like timed attack thing. So press a button when your attack is about to go off, you have like a little extra attack. Uh, that felt like sluggish and the inputs felt weird. It felt like this other game that had like a lot of like thematic promise and a lot of like trading on its art style and the marketing. And that game was called... like Amora or something something like that let me look it up real quick I want to get the name right Orion Legacy of the Coriodon. And like, that game also had a pretty cool gameplay premise and a pretty good art style. Um, but it just, it suffered from not meeting the basic like engineering and construction challenges of making a game. Which is the way I felt when I played the Chris Tail demo. Like, it, it feels like it's got, like, a Flash game kind of a quality to it. And uh, the analogy that I want to make is I feel like making a game is somewhat like constructing a house. Uh, like, you have the designers and the writers and these people who come along at the start and create the plan. And then you deliver the plan, like the blueprints, to the construction crew... Uh, and these people who are the people who practically build the construction and in games that's the artists and the engineers, 3D modelers, these people. Um, and so the point is <laughs> using that analogy, like just the house is not well built, like the plan seemed really good but the house is not built very well. Um, some of the design is a little, some of the design has like an RPG maker kind of, kind of quality. I realize I'm just talking through like analogies and references, but like, that's what it feels like. It feels like, you know, flash game kind of quality, RPG maker kind of quality. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like the, the gameplay is a bit of a gimmick. Um, like, that's something that I think, like, uh, an RPG might do as a shtick for, like, w one dungeon in an RPG. But to build a game around that, I don't think it's a powerful enough um, gameplay mechanic or narrative device. I think time travel RPGs do work. Um, obviously, there was Chrono Trigger. Uh, but there was also this one for the, I think the Nintendo DS called, like, Rise something. I bet if I type NDS Best RPG, it comes up. It did not come up. 
Radiant Historia. There we go. What's it actually ranked? One, two, three, four, six. It's like the thirty-second best RPG on the <laughs> on the Nintendo DS. Yeah, actually, this is a pretty interesting list here. Um, it is somewhat accurate. So the world ends with you, and then you got the sequel, Neo: The World Ends with You. That's coming out, um, what later this month now, right? Yeah. I came out in 2007. Wow, how long ago was that? 2007. Uh, it's like 14 years ago. So I was 19. 19. I played The World Ends With You when I was 19. Um, wild. <clears throat> Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. I played that for like a couple of minutes. I don't know. I really loved Mario RPG, um, and I tried to like Paper Mario, and I tried to play some of these Mario and Luigi games, but it just didn't do it for me. Uh, and then Chrono Trigger Port. Chrono Trigger is a really good game, you guys, uh, but it's also pretty old. It's also pretty old. Um, I played it again recently, and I've played it dozens of times. I've played it well over 30 times, probably, in my life. Um, like, I played it again recently, like, within the last, like, five, six months. Um, and some guy gave me shit, because I didn't put it on my, like, top ten favorite RPGs of all time. Like, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's good. I'm not saying it's not good. It's probably the best RPG from the Super Nintendo. That's for, like, sure. It's between that and Final Fantasy III. Um... But the competition has grown since then, and I feel like now, it, by now, it is edged out of the top ten uh, for me. Not to be controversial, because gamers gonna dislike my video if I don't like Chrono Trigger as much as them. Um, okay, Dragon Quest V. I think I played that one. Dragon Quest IX. Um, I played that one. That was the one that would have like generic characters and class changing and stuff. Uh, Golden Sun, the sequel. I played the first one, but not any of the sequels. Shin Megami Tensei, Pokemon Heart Gold, Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light, another Shin Megami Tensei, Final Fantasy IV, two more Pokemon games, Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, another Mario and Luigi game, FFT, a2, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2, Pokemon Black 2, White 2. There was a good RPGs on the Nintendo DS. This was a good system for RPGs. Etrian Odyssey 2. I played a bunch of the Etrian Odyssey games. I played 1, 2, 4. 4 was the best one. And then what they started doing is they started remaking them because Etrian Odyssey didn't really have a story. They started remaking them with a story and like, uh, you know, like um, characters that you didn't create, like story characters. Castlevania Ordi Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. The best one was Aria of Sorrow. That was the best one. Suikoden Tear Crest. I never played that, but I wanted to. I remember I really wanted to back in the day. But I didn't really want to because I'm... I'm pretty sure you can just emulate these games at this point. Um, but yeah, this list is like taking me back. I remember all this stuff. Final Fantasy XII, Revenant Wings. Valkyrie Profile Covenant of the Plume is above Radiant Historia? No way. I disagree with this list now. <laughs> Radiant Historia should be higher on this list. Like... I, I I don't know. It does it deserves to be higher.
Um, maybe it's called Donosaur. I'm not good with names. Is that the one with Soma, where, spoilers, Soma turns out to be Dracula? He's like young, good Dracula. What was this video supposed to be about, you guys? What was it about when I started filming? Can't for the life of me remember. All right, Chris Tales. I don't really want to play the game. The reviews are mixed. I will say this, though. Um, I gave a Monster Hunter Story 2 review where... Basically, I said the game was too simple, and it felt like a starter RPG. And I still feel like that. It has, like, a weirdly reminiscent quality to, like, Quest 64 for me. It just... It feels like a somewhat generic, like, launch title RPG. You know what I mean? And, uh... The story is unbearably for kids. And, like... There is a difference between four kids, like a Pixar movie, or like Fern Gully, or something, um, where there are elements of it an adult can enjoy, and like Blue's Clues, or something along those lines, where it is just grating and unbelievably banal. Um, but the game got a lot better for me when I started skipping every story scene. <laughs> and as it started getting toward in-game, um, a lot of the systems that don't really feel like they're well fleshed out or worth it start to feel worth it because the difficulty starts to increase a little bit. And uh, you start needing to pay attention to like what element your weapon has and um, things of this nature. So basically, the game was mediocre uh, and for kids. Uh, but the post game actually held my attention reasonably well uh, because a lot of those like upgrades began to become interesting and necessary. It also there was like this tension in this game because part of the game is like trying to incentivize you to go collect eggs and go uh, hunt monsters for monster parts so you can upgrade your weapons. <clears throat> but the problem <coughs> with that premise is that you could either go upgrade the weapons you have now <clears throat> and do all that collection stuff or spend an equal amount of time progressing in the plot and you're skipping all the plot so it's like you can go do three dungeons and collect all this stuff or you can go progress the plot by three dungeons and you'll just get better equipment that way like it's better to have you know the level one whatever from three story dungeons from now than to upgrade what I have now as I'm progressing through the stories to stop my progress and upgrade all the current gear I have. Like you unlock gear at a pace where um, upgrading anything is kind of like, so you really don't like change your gear that often. You usually like buy a thing, upgrade it maybe once and you hang on to it for like a really long time. But when you get to the final dungeon, uh, you start getting a bunch of weapons that are like equally powerful and just have subtle differences. Like they have like a different element or they just have like slightly higher crit or they have like a different skill. And so you start being a little choosier about your weapons because uh, you start maybe having to redo some of these boss fights a couple of times and start thinking like, all right, what do we do here? All right, he's weak to water, so I guess I gotta go farm for that water weapon or whatever. That held my attention a lot more than the actual game. And plus, you could change your party members, which was pretty welcome. Because um, I don't think that, like, story-based guest partner thing really works in games. Unless it's a party-based game and they're, like, 
not an integral addition to your party. They're just like an extra slot. Then it kind of works. Um, but for you to just have like one story based partner. Yeah. Now that I've just said that, I'm thinking about it. Like, I think it kind of worked in Diablo 4. You just had one single story based companion. I don't know. It's weird. Like, the incentive structure for that game is weird. Like, it's a game that's supposed to be about collecting eggs. There's, like, virtually no incentive to do that. Because uh, you can only use one monster. Like I said in my previous review of this, you can only use one monster. And you just need one monster of every type. And your power monster is going to be the story monster that they give you. So there's power, tech, and speed. And it's like rock, paper, scissors. Your power monster you get through story. And, like, while you can find... <clears throat> probably like slightly more powerful monsters than that like no <laughs> no you would be you would be hard pressed to find a, a competitive uh, power based monster to that um, especially because you'll start like powering that one up with genes and stuff like nothing's going to catch up until the end game and then you're going to have to farm a lot and the difficulty of this game just does not demand that you do that so your power monster is already out of the way so you just get your hands on a tech monster and a speed monster and like you're good to go after that like hunting eggs is irrelevant it's just like bonus loot that you get at the end of every dungeon and you mostly sacrifice them to get gene upgrades for your top three monsters um i wish you could pick your companions monster I think that would give a little more like uh, choice. I'm not saying like you should be able to give them whatever monster you catch, but maybe they they themselves have like a little stable of monsters, and you could pick which one of them you want them to uh, bring with them. But anyway, <clears throat> based on my experience, I think when I reviewed it before and I was about sixty percent of the way done, now that I'm fully finished. Um, I would upgrade it. I don't know if I gave it like a letter score in that review. Um, but I would upgrade it from... I would say it's it's somewhere in like, is it a C plus or a B minus kind of territory. Um, there are some really positive aspects to it. I, I think the art style for the game is really good. Even though I, I think the level design is incredibly weak, uh, I think the art style is really good. It has kind of a Zelda Breath of the Wild um, kind of look to it, to the 3D models and stuff. Just has a really bright color palette. Has like a really pastel kind of feel. I think the character models look really nice. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I want to give it a C plus, and that's not trying to be harsh. It's kind of like, I think I would give better games than this, like a B, <laughs> like in B and B territory. Um, I think this one's definitely in C territory for me. But it's, that's not to say I didn't enjoy it, right? Even a, even a bad pizza piece of pizza is still pretty good. Like, <laughs> I should be happy there's any... RPGs coming out this year at all after that coronavirus thing. I don't know. I almost don't even want to give suggestions to that game because I'm so not the target audience for it. Because I really do think it is kind of like a beginner RPG for kids. Um, and I think that is a good thing to be. I think that type of thing should exist, and I think it's probably pretty good at being that. Uh, but I am not a consumer of that. I've been playing RPGs for a long time, and I don't watch children's television. So, um, so I don't know. I, don't, I almost feel like... <clears throat> um, I 
I shouldn't I shouldn't make suggestions because uh, all all my suggestions would be something to make me like it more. Um, well, okay, thinking about it like that, I do think if it was for kids, I think they would respond to a less esoteric like um, game design for the upgrade mechanics for the monsters. That was a messy sentence, but you know what I mean. Like um, the version of like the sphere grid in this game is like this gene system for the monsters, and that's fine. Um, but that could be like a little more involved and a little more fun. Cause okay, here's the thing about the gene system. Here's the way it works, and one it has to do with the difficulty of the game. They might have to make the game like ten times harder than it is for me not to use this strategy. Um, so there are colors, it, the, it's a tic-tac-toe grid, and there are colors for the genes. It can be red, uh, it can be blue, any of the elemental colors. And if you match those colors in a row, it boosts your damage output for that element. Up to if you have every single gene on the board the same color, it would be like 150, 160% of your 1.6 times normal damage. Uh, but then there's also an attack type, uh, and it can be tech power or um, speed. And you can do the same thing there. And so the best strategy for the grid is to just fill it up with things that are all exactly the same icon. So like if you have a fire elemental power dragon, fill it up with fire elemental power genes and that's it. It's, it's not like a puzzle. Um, and it's just like this kind of weird, like esoteric, mathy way to upgrade your characters. It's, it's not like a super fun upgrade system. And when I say upgrade system like that, you can compare that to other upgrade systems, like there's skill trees or whatever. Uh, but I think what works in a game like this is the monster trainer kind of upgrade system because it gives you a sense of being kind of closer to your monster. And so, um, I don't know, you send it out on like training expeditions and it comes back and it learns like a new gene of some kind. You could still keep this gene mechanic. And then I also um, have this kind of pre preconceived notion because I played this game Breath of Fire 3, which also had a gene mechanic. Uh, but theirs was a lot more fun because if you mix certain genes together, you transform your character into like a special version of that monster. Uh, so it could help the diversity of this tic-tac-toe puzzle if, if you make certain kinds of, you know, let's say, slot patterns with the different genes. Um, you can fundamentally transform your monster into like a special version of that monster. Let me give you an example. Uh, you have a fire elemental monster. It doesn't behoove you very much to like diversify the elements of the monster. You just get a different monster for that element, right? So you fill it up with all red. However, if there was like a secret gene code for that breed of monster and you filled it up one row red, one row blue, one row yellow, uh, it suddenly unlocks, you know, full, as if the whole grid was filled with each of those elements. So 1.6 times damage for all these different elemental types. So I, there could be some fun stuff to do with that. I think the upgrade system was a little weak. Um, and I think it could be more fun, especially for that demographic of kids. Because uh, even most adults are not going to spend time tinkering with that kind of thing. Um, and kids, you're going to get like a really specific type of kid who likes those sort of Rubik's Cube style logic puzzles. I think you can retain elements of that while still making it more fun. Like there's a lot of these monster training games and I honestly I expected a little more from Monster Hunter, like this known brand which Honestly, I don't have much experience with. I don't particularly uh, find the Monster Hunter like main 
entry games uh, particularly interesting. I haven't played one, but it just it doesn't seem like something I'm particularly into. Yeah, and so there's so many monster training games, and there's so many monster training mechanics that have been tried in all of these various games uh, that I expected a little bit more from Monster Hunter than, like, hatch an egg, and they don't, there's no real way to, like, passively level up the monsters that you don't use. You can send them on expeditions, but that's a pain. Um, you have to constantly go back and refresh your expeditions. Um, and you don't really do anything with any of the monsters you collect except sacrifice them for genes. I thought Monster Hunter Stories 2 was going to be like on the level of like Pokemon or like Monster Rancher. Like, um, I don't know. It just, it didn't live up to a brand name that big. And there are a lot of monster raising type games and I have played several of them so I don't know but it has it has potential I think all right let's call that a video I'm gonna do I'm gonna talk more but I don't know what else I'm gonna talk about yet let's see I talked about movies. I just talked about games. I don't know. Alright. I'll give it some thought and I'll come back.